dear students in this part of uh, paper the module is going to focus on the quality of common errors that arises from census data the major objective of this module is to focus on the large scale surveys especially the indian census its origin the historical development over different census periods and various questions that have been asked and analyzed and the aspects related to the census in terms of its administration the methodology and the implications that the data that arises have been the major focus of this module despite the prol proliferation of large scale surveys the indian census remains one of the largest administrative exercises in the world for the census enumerators fan out across india to visit every household and collect various aspects related to the issues of housing social demographic and economic data from every person that are residing in the country census data is used to create a comprehensive profile of the country which can be used to derive better decisions and policies at all levels for instance in 2011 census which is the latest the data was collected from as high as 6,8786 villages in the country and also co covering 7,742 towns and 5,767 tehsils across India's 640 districts and that has been with a covering of uh, 7,33,600 crore tons of paper which have been used for conducting this operation. Despite the scale of this undertaking, the 2011 census achieved a response rate of over 97 to 98 percent coverage. Let's discuss about the purpose for which the census operations are carried out in the country. The purpose of census is completely different. at in the current stages when compared to the earlier days it was uh, in those days the purpose of collecting census data is mainly to help government from various policies which are pro people in nature although we can continue to debate forever whether the government actually makes pro people policies or not the way the data is collected in india is that a questionnaire is made where all the basic questions like age date of birth number of children marital status name of parents work done by the members of the house and the like which have been very vital events of uh, the household apart from this quintessential data the census also tries to find out the caste you belong to especially if you live in a rural area and also what kind of job you do after collecting all this information the census officials create groups to put together people according to the kind of work they do this is where one of the problems comes into light the problem lies in having watertight categories to characterize a kind of work that a particular person is doing for example let's th take the category in which the controversy has come to light the census of india has created various groups or categories to help them distinguish one kind of job from other or a kind of work of which one of them is economically unproductive category now the problem lies in how we define economically unproductive and if we assume that the basis for including a person in this category is money then it is not correct to include prostitutes in this category as they do earn some kind of money even if that is not white money but the fact remains that is money all the same so it's unfair to group these categories in the economically unproductive category and as for housewives there appears to be some logic in that they do not earn money but then that is because of social stereotypes although it must be accepted that many women are breaking away from this stereotype leaving that aside it is unfair to group the housewives in the same group 
as beggars and prisoners. There need to be subcategories in some of these categories, otherwise the controversy will continue to haunt the census officials every time they conduct the census. Then another problem with the census is that there is no way of determining whether a person does belong to the SCST section or the, or the people fabricating the details so that they can get the benefits of belonging to that group like needing lower marks and this is just one example. But still there needs to be some check mechanism to ensure that a such thing does not take place in the future. The greatest of all controversies that the census has faced is whether there should be a caste census. Here again, it is easy for people to fabricate their status so that they can get more benefits than they should usually get. If we do have caste census, then it might end up having an adverse effect as people from higher caste will end up with all the goodies and the lower caste conditions would remain the same given the track record that we have. All in all, we have to improve on the categories that we have for working and non-working people and there is a need to look into the feasibility of a caste census whether it will end up forming the social fabric or not and last but not the least there needs, needs to be a system of check mechanisms to stop people from fabricating about their status in society. So lot of work needs to be done so that the problems that are currently being faced during the census surveys can be reduced if not eliminated. Let us look at the history of census in India. A population census is the process of collecting, compiling, analyzing and disseminating the major factors like demographic, social, cultural and economic data relating to all persons in the country at a particular time in 10 years interval. Conducting population census in a country like India with a great diversity of physical features is undisputedly the biggest administrative exercise of, uh, of our time. The wealth of information collected through census on houses, amenities available to the households, socio-economic and cultural characteristics of the population makes Indian census the richest and the only source for planners, research scholars, administrators and other data users. The planning and execution of Indian census is very challenging and also fascinating. India is one of the very few countries in the world which has a proud history of holding census after every 10 years. The Indian census has a very long history behind it. The earliest literature Rig Veda reveals that some kind of population count was maintained during 800 to 600 BC. Kautilya's Ardhasastra written around 321 to 296 BC laid stress on census taking as a measure of state policy or purpose of taxation. During the regime of Mughal King Akbar the Great, the administrative report Aina Akbari included comprehensive data pertaining to population, industry, wealth and many other characteristics. In ancient Rome too, census was conducted for purpose of taxation. The history of Indian census can be divided into two parts broadly that is pre-independence era and post-independence era. Independence era and post-independence era, when we discuss in detail, the pre-independence period, the history of census began with 1800 when England had begun its census, but the population of dependencies was not known at that time. In its continuation, based on its methodology, census was conducted in town of Allahabad in 1824 and in the city of Benares in the year 1827-28 by James Princip. The first complete census of an Indian city was conducted in 1830 by Henry Walter in Dhaka. In this census, the statistics of population with the sex and broad age groups and also houses with their amenities were mainly collected. Second census was conducted in 1836-37 to by Fort St. George. In 1849, Government of India ordered local governments to conduct quinquennial returns of population. As a result, 
A system of periodical stock taking of people was inaugurated in Madras, which was continued till the imperial census was ordered. These returns were taken during the official years 1851 to 52, 1856 to 57, 1861 to 62, and 1866 to 67, respectively. The census in northwestern provinces took place in 1852, which was regular house-to-house -house numbering of all the people in the province at the night of 31st December 1852. The quinquennial census of 1866-67 was merged with the imperial census of 1871. The Home Government Department of Government of India had desired under Statistical Dispatch No. 2 of July 23, 1856 that a general census of population might be taken in 1861, which was postponed in 1859 due to the mutinies. However, on 10th January 1865, a census by an actual house-to-house -house enumeration was undertaken in northwestern provinces. A similar census was undertaken in November 1966 in central provinces and in 1867 in Berar. The census in Punjab territory was taken in January 1855 and 1868 respectively. The census of Oud was taken in 1869. In the cities of Madras, Bombay and Calcutta, census was taken in 1863, 1864 and 1866 respectively. An experimental census of lower provinces of Bengal was organized in 1869, which was completed by H. Beverley, Registrar General in 1865, the Government of India and Home Department had agreed upon the principle that a general population census would be taken up in 1871. In the year 1866-67, to 67, census was undertaken by the actual counting of heads in most of the parts of the country, which is known as the census of 1872. This census did not cover all territories possessed or controlled by the British. In this census, a house register was canvassed with 17 questions. The information collected pertains to name, age, religion, caste or class, race or nationality, attending school or college, and able to read and write. These common questions were asked separately for males and females. A question on occupation was canvassed for males only. The census of 1881, which was undertaken on 17th February 1881 by W. C. Plowden, the Census Commissioner of India, was a great step towards a modern synchronous census. Since then, census have been undertaken uninterruptedly once every 10 years. In this census, emphasis was laid not only on complete coverage, but also on classification of demographic, economic and social characteristics. The census of 1881 took an entire continent of British India except Kashmir, which also includes predatory states in political connection with the government of India. However, it did not include French and Portuguese colonial possessions. However, a census of Portuguese colonial dominions in India was also undertaken at the same time as the British Indian census. British provinces, namely Bengal, Northwest provinces, Madras, Bombay, Punjab, Assam, Baruch, Berar, Kur, and Ajmer, besides native states of Rajputna, Central India, the Nizam's dominions, Mysore, Baroda, Travancore, and Cochin were included in the census of 1881. In the census of 1881, a schedule, census schedule with 12 questions was canvassed. Deviating from past, a question on sex was introduced and practice of canvassing same questions for males and females separately dropped. New question on marital status, mother tongue, place of birth and infirmities were included. 
the question on education was modified to the extent that for those who are not educated it was ascertained that whether they are able to read and write or to be analyzed from hindus their caste was ascertained and in other cases information on sect was obtained the second census was conducted from 26th february 1891 almost on the pattern of 1881 census in this census efforts were made for 100% coverage and upper part of present burma kashmir and sikkim were also included during this census the same schedule was canvassed which contains 14 questions the question on religion caste literacy occupation etc were further modified in place of religion information on main religion was obtained and information on sect was dropped in article census of india 2011 page 3 also was collected questions on caste or race of main religion and subdivision of caste or race were also canvassed the departure from previous census was that in place of mother tongue information on parental tongue was obtained the third continuous census was started on 1st march 1901 in this census baluchistan rajputana andaman nicobar burma punjab and remote areas of kashmir were included and in respect of other areas where detailed survey was not possible population was estimated on the basis of houses the census schedule of 1901 census contained 16 questions the main change was that the provision for house number was made in the schedule other changes were caste of only hindus and jains were recorded and in case of other religions name of tribe or race were recorded in place of foreign language a new question no or does not know english was included in place of mother or parental tongue the question was modified to the extent language ordinarily used the census of 1911 was commenced on 10th march 1911 in all 14 british provinces and native states in this census the whole empire of india that is territories administered by the government of india and mediatized native states were covered with the exception of a few sparsely inhabited and unadministered tracts on the confines of burma and assam the census schedule canvassed in this schedule in this census contained same number of 16 questions but their scope was extended in place of age the question was asked age completed last birthday along with the question on religion sect of christians was also ascertained the particulars of district province or country were asked in respect of birthplace question in 1901 a question no or does not know english was asked but in 1911 in its place the question was asked whether literate in english the 1921 census the fifth census in its continuous series was started on 18th march 1921 in this census the whole of territory known as the indian empire was covered which also includes the territories directly controlled by the government of india generally known as british india and the indian states consisting of areas administered by indian chief in political relation with the central government or with one or the other provincial governments although the census schedule of 1921 contains the same questions like 1911 that they were canvassed with slight modifications the sect of christians which was asked in 1911 was dropped and information on caste tribe or race was collected from all irrespective of their religion the sixth general census of india commenced on february 26 1931 the area covered in this census was approximately identical with that of covered by the census of 1921 the 1931 census also coincided with a civil disobedience movement the census schedule of 1931 census contains 18 questions instead of 16 questions of 1921 census the two new questions added were a earner or dependent and b 
mother tongue, which was asked only in 1881. For eliciting information on second language, the question other languages in common use were retained. Again, the sect was added in with religion and age was ascertained in respect to nearest birthday. The census of 1941 started under the adverse conditions of war. Till February 1940, government was undecided of whether to have a census or not. With concentrated efforts, the enumeration was carried out directly into the slips while drop in article census of india 2011 page 4 were later sorted out to generate tables the idea of one night enumeration was dropped in this census the major innovation of 1941 census was to use random sample and every 50th slip was marked to list the validity of a sample in census in place of census schedule an individual slip was canvassed which contains 22 questions The formation of questions was modified to the great extent. The following were the new questions of 1941 census. 1. Number of children born to a married woman and number surviving. 2. Her age at birth of first child. 3. Do you employ paid assistants, member of household, if so, how many? 4. Are you in search of employment? That is mainly for unemployed. and how long have you been in search of it 5 how far have you read besides the question of literacy was asked in different ways can you both read and write if so what script do you write can you read only let's discuss now the census of post independence period after 1941 census india got its independence in 1947 the board committee constituted for making plans for post war development in the field of health made a comprehensive review of the field of population and recommended that a registrar general of vital and population statistics at the center be appointed and at provincial level a superintendent may be appointed with a view to improve the quality of population statistics the board committee also recommended that the population problem should be the subject of central study accordingly the census act came into force in 1948 act number no. 37 of 1948 the census of post independence era were conducted as per the provisions of this act the first census of independent india was conducted in 1951 which was the seventh census in its continuous series the enumeration period of this census was from 9th to 28th february 1951 a three day revisional round from first to third drop in article census of india 2011 page 5 march was undertaken to update the data as on sunrise of 1st march the reference date an individual slip was canvassed which contained 13 questions the particulars like name relationship birthplace sex age economic status principal and subsidiary means of livelihood were obtained for each individual the information on religion mother tongue literacy was also obtained out of 13 questions 12 questions with its sub parts were common for all states while one question with sub part relating to fertility unemployment infirmity size of family was optional for certain states in the census of 1951 the entire jammu and kashmir was excluded from census and its population was estimated on the basis of past census figures let's discuss about census of 1961 the census of 1961 started on 10th february 1961 and ended on sunrise of 1st march The revisional round took place for 5 days instead of 3 days of 1951 census. However, the reference date remained unchanged. In place of individual slip of 1951 census, following two schedules were canvassed. A. Household schedule for each household. B. Individual slip for each individual. The household schedule was divided in A, B and C parts which were further divided in sub parts. Information 
relating to persons engaged in cultivation and household industry was collected through this schedule. The individual slip consists of 13 questions. The individual slips of 1951 and 1961 census differ in following ways. In 1961, age at last birthday was asked in place of age. A question on civil condition asked in 1951 was dropped in 1961. The question on birthplace was further subdivided in three parts to elicit information on rural or urban status and duration of residence. In 1951, information on economic status with dependency and employment status was obtained whereas in 1961 its scope was enlarged and the details of employment in four broad categories of workers with nature of industry, class of workers, etc. was also obtained. The census of 1971, which was the 11th census in continuous series and second after independence, was carried out. The census of 1971 was conducted at different times as compared to previous census to avoid clash with midterm parliamentary elections. The census of 1971 was conducted between 10th March and 31st March and revisional round was taken from 1st to 3rd April. Deviating from past, the reference date was taken as 1st April 1971. The census of 71 was conducted in following two phases, a house listing operations to actual enumeration. The first phase was conducted in different parts of country at different times between June to September 1970 by canvassing two schedules, namely house list and establishment schedule. During the second phase, an individual slip was canvassed a drop in article Census of India 2011 page 6 which contained 17 questions. The following were the new features of 1971 individual slips. A question for getting information on fertility for currently married women was included. An additional question last residence was included to get the information on migration aspect in a better way. The scope of economic questions was further enlarged and a new question on secondary work was introduced. The fourth census of independent India which was conducted from 9th to 28th February 1981 with a revisional round from 1st to 5th March 1981. The reference date was again reckoned as sunrise of 1st March which could not be adhered to in 1971. On the pattern of 1971, this census was again conducted in two phases. In the first phase, a house list schedule was canvassed but the establishment schedule which was canvassed during 1971 was dropped in 1981. Deviating from past census, in 1981 following two schedules were canvassed during second phase, household schedule and individual slip. The household schedule consists of two parts. In the first part, the particulars of household like religion, SCST status, language spoken and also predominant construction materials of wall, roof and floor were also collected. The information on amenities like drinking water, electricity, toilet facility available to the household were also collected in first part of the household schedule. In the second part, characteristics of each individual which were identical to individual slips were collected. Information on first few columns in part 2 of household individual slips were recorded in the field simultaneously while in remaining columns of household schedule, the information from individual slip was transcribed later on. Following changes were incorporated in the individual slip of 1981 census. The slip was divided into two parts 1 and 2. In first part, 16 questions were included which were canvassed on universal basis. The second part contained 6 questions relating to migration and fertility which were canvassed on sample basis. In part 1, 2 new questions attending school or college and if non-worker seeking or available for work were included. In part 2, a question on reason for migration was also included. In part 2, age at marriage was asked from ever married woman whereas in 1971 this question was asked from current woman only. Overall, in this module, we have covered to a great extent the various issues related to census, its origin, the historical background and uh, the developments that have taken place in every census have been covered to, so as to give an in-depth information about the various questions that have been uh, on basis of which the questions, the information was obtained from each individuals of the country.